This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, my cat loving friends. We are back, and we today are with Catherine Hilton, who works with the Blind Cat. Cat Rescue. I can talk to blindcatrescue.com. And Rita and I realized out of all the cats that we've had in our homes, we don't think we've ever worked with a blind cat. So we need to know about this rescue, how we can be helping cats, what's the deal, how worried should we be. We have so many questions and we'll be back right after this word from our sponsor. Kitty Poo Club reinvented the litter box. No more scrubbing that stinky plastic tray or worrying. Oh my God, do my guests smell that? No cleaning, no scrubbing, no more stink. You are going to love it. Your cats are going to love it. Go to kittypooclub.com and when you order, save 30% on your first auto ship. Visit kittypooclub.com, use code meow30 at checkout and join the club, the Kitty Poo Club. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. I am your co-host, Linda Hall, here with my ever-gorgeous BFF, Rita Reimers. I always I'm wonder out- when you compliment what the heck you want. I know. know. I'm outnumbered today. we got two blondes versus one brunette. I'm telling well, you. Well, look I'm out. <laughs> Those of you who are keeping count, 19 Cats and Counting, I'm on my way back up to 19. I adopted number 16 this weekend. Yeah. Over the holiday, one of my mom's friends found a little black kitten. She's probably, I'm guessing she's a she. She won't let me look long enough. Good, I she's think it's modest. A, yes, she's, she's probably about eight to ten weeks old. Tiny little black kitty. My cats, like within the first day, were already they're already bonded. So those of you who say you can't make it work, call us. We can. Yeah, help. no kidding. Well, let's now, find out. Let's yes. get to the blind cat rescue in Miss yes. Catherine Hilton. I am so Hi, excited. Catherine. I've never dealt with a blind cat before. We've had just about every configuration but a blind cat, but. You're right up when we saw your purpose and your mission, you're right up our alley because we're all about, and I hate the word, but the unadoptable cats. That's the word we use. You know, this cat has FIV, this cat has a dangling leg and we can't afford surgery. So we're going to use special needs. I like to call them special. There you go. Special needs. Yes. Senior cats. And so that was the cry of our heart. And you kind of went ahead and and done, did it and beat us to the punch. So (laughs) how long have Spline Cat Rescue been opened? What started it? And tell us about it. Yeah, Blind Cat Rescue has been around for 18 years. It was started by our current CEO and founder, Alana Miller, because she and her daughter were working at volunteering at animal shelters and these blind cats kept coming in and they would be euthanized and it really bothered her. And so this one very special cat named Louie came in and she adopted him and it started getting you know more and more. And she said, okay, we have to do something about this. So she founded Blind Cat Rescue. And it is a forever home for blind cats. And then in 2011, we expanded our our mission a little bit to include FIV positive and leukemia positive cats. So now we've got a mix of all three. And um, we promised them a forever home and that's what they get. And um, by being there, they're educating people every single day that they deserve to live and they should have a chance and that they matter. Yes, 100%. We don't just start Xing off people because of this disability or that. Right. And I was thinking about this last night. So as a behaviorist and with all the classes that we've taken, we know that cats rely on their scent much more than their sight. We tell people this all the time, all the time, all the time. You can go ahead and get facial reconstruction, but don't change the scent. So how <laughs> much true. does it affect them <laughs> when they lose their sight? I'm assuming they're able, because I've seen them manage to get around without limbs and things before. Mm -hmm. Yep. They don't miss a beat. Honestly, they are cats. They run up and down climbers. They run up and down carondas. They play, they tussle, they chase bugs, they chase little lizards. Um, They don't miss a beat. They carry right on. You know, we're, we're the ones that go, oh, he can't see. That's so sad. Well, they don't think that way. They just continue on being cats. Um, On our, our YouTube feed, we have a video of cats that are bird watching. And they're literally bird watching. None of those cats even has eyes. 
but the, there were, a bird got into their sort of outdoor fenced in enclosure and they're all going like this watching <laughs> if they can hear it flying around and they're just going in unison like this and they can feel yes. the vibration in their whiskers oh too. yeah they don't oh, miss definitely they carry on we talk about stuff like this all the time like my cats know my husband is two blocks from home and they'll tell me oh dad's coming because they feel the vibrations of his car all the things that they can pick up and know and do. And we tell people, you know, a cat outside in a feral cloud or, and they can smell and know there's an intruder there and wake up right away. So yeah, I just sat there laying thinking, how much does this really affect them? Does this, you know, does this hurt their confidence because they can't see what's coming or you have not seen any kind of delay at all. That's really good to hear. Not a bit. What is happening that is making all these cats blind? How are we getting here? Well, it's interesting. There's there's a lot of non-information out there about that. Um, I think the most common way that cats go blind is when they have an upper respiratory infection that is not treated. You see all the time kittens, somebody will say, oh, my cat's got this runny eye and he's kind of sneezing. What should I do? Go to the vet. Right. I know. Upper respiratory infection. And if you don't treat it, their eyes will literally burst. Uh, I wanted to just put that on, on repeat because I'll, blah, blah. And what should I do? Vet, blah, blah. What Go should I do? Vet, blah, blah. Vet, vet, vet. Yeah. We've done many blog stories about cat health. And at the end of almost every one that, that I've written, it's like, if you have any doubt that your cat is experiencing whatever it is, go to the vet. Go to the vet. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the signs of an upper respiratory infection are pretty obvious. You know, it looks like a kitty cold, as they people like to call it. But if you don't treat it, they will lose their sight. You know, we we had um, we have a couple kitties that came in um, with a third brother when they were kittens. And um, one of them had badly ruptured eyes because they all wow. had infections and they weren't treated. That's important to yes. know because a lot of people just, oh, he's got runny eyes and they just shrug like it's not a big deal, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a cold. He'll be fine. And then they'll say, oh, his eyes swelling a little bit. Well, go to the vet. <laughs> well, and you have to know your cat. So I have a cat that I want to get DNA tested so badly. I think he's got some Persian in him. His nose is just a little bit shorter. And, you know, they tend to get more colds because of the shorter nasal area. And so he does. He gets a cold at least twice a year. And I'm always, I heard Galway sneeze. Everybody keep an eye on Galway. If my FIV boy sneezes, call the vet, call the vet. We got to yeah. go now because he's compromised. So you have to know your animal and know what you can get away with too. And if it's an animal you don't know very well, do something about it because you don't know what's what's brewing underneath, right? Yeah, that's, that's always part two of the admonition at the end is keep an eye on your cat. Know what their health is. Make sure that they've been to the vet. So there's a baseline for blood work and, sure. and everything. You know, keep an eye on anything it. different that they do, right? Like, yeah. oh, you don't usually hang out on that side of my bed. What are you doing over there? You know, there's the a reason, are, you know, right? they, they mask pain. That's what they are genetically programmed to do so they can survive in the wild. Yes, so You exactly. have to be the one to notice, oh, he stopped eating. Oh, he's not using the box. Oh, you know, he walks around in circles, whatever it is, it's not normal. There's That's a, a reason. Clue. Oh, yes, the not exactly. eating thing gets me. So a lot of people are like, oh, my cat's just picky. He'll eat when he's hungry. No, he won't. No. They won't. They will starve and die before they'll right. eat something that they don't want to eat or take their eye off of the perceived predator. We had a client recently that said the cat was just isolating because it's scared of the new guy. So she, she had a barrier up for safety, but so she brought the food close to each other so that if she wanted to eat, she had, yeah, three days with no eating or drink. She's like, I had to give in. And I'm like, good. She's like, oh, I thought you'd be like, you shouldn't give in. I'm like, no, on that, we should definitely give in because it's food, right? right. So, exactly. so none of the cats you bring in are adoptable to others. Is it because you want them to know how to handle the cat? I mean, if I came in and said, I'm looking for an older cat and I want someone with a disability and I've had experience with blind cats, would I be able to adopt a cat from your rescue? Not from our rescue, no. And there's a good reason for that. Um, our founder, and she learned this through experience, that by the time they get to us, they've been through so much trauma in their lives, whether that be a traumatic accident, being hit by a car, being dumped in a, the woods, or being shuttled between houses when their owner died. 
she's like, that's it. They've been through enough. And if you go to our website and click on the cats, all of the, each box there has a story of one of the cats. And when you read it, have a tissue handy because a lot of them are oh, very, I'm just not going to read it. Not and doing yeah. it. Now. <laughs> that's going to be our mission too. There are going to be when they come here. Be happy that they all have very happy endings. Cause once they get to yes. us, they get nothing but love and care for however long they're with us, whether it's two weeks or 20 years. Yep, that's our goal too. We want to eventually open a cat cafe with adoptables, but the special needs and seniors, when they get to us, that's their last stop. They're, they're with us forever. Exactly. Exactly. Can I ask a ask. question about food? I'm sorry, Linda. Um, when we're talking about food and the causes of the blindness. I know if cats don't get enough taurine in their diet and other nutrients, it can affect their vision. So are any of the cases that you see, is it happening in great numbers that people aren't feeding their cats right and they're having vision problems because of it. No, I, th I think the secondary most prevalent reason we see is high blood pressure, undiagnosed Ooh. high blood pressure. You know, vets don't all, always check blood pressure in cats because it's tricky. Kitties don't enjoy it. And if if your cat suddenly has high blood pressure and goes blind or goes blind, get that blood pressure checked right away. If you do it fast enough, you can you might be able with meds stop it from having the retinas detach. Or permanent. Um, we had one guy come in a few years ago who had suddenly gone blind and his owners didn't want him anymore. And the first thing we did was have his blood pressure checked and it was elevated. So we got him on medication and he got a little bit of sight back. So, you know, you got to kind of prod your vets to do that because they don't always yeah, check. You, you've got to advocate for your pet. Prevalent way. I did not. We got we to look into that more. I've not. That's something I don't recall ever being told by my vet. And believe me, with all these cats, there's a lot of vet visits in my life. Your cat's blood pressure was okay or not okay. Or I've yeah, never been told that ever? either. You don't think about blood pressure in cats, you know, because, you you know, we think about that with people because we all have stresses and life and all that. But for cats, you know, it could be congenital. It could be, you know, uh, illness related, but we wouldn't know it. Well, and their stress. I mean. Cats are both predator and prey in nature. That. You are literally living like scared that your high school bully is going to come nab you and throw you in the locker at any second mm -hmm. now. That's exactly. stressful. And then the mm -hmm. stress we people go through and we know we share it with our animals and put it on them. <laughs> you know, well, even just stress. bringing another cat in, that's stress. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if a cat's in a new environment or there's been a sudden change in their life, like suddenly they're outdoors or their owner dies and they're somewhere else that can elevate it, you know, and it's just, it's another thing where you as an owner or as a cat focused person can be aware. And especially, you know, with blindness, it's pretty obvious. They get, you know, their eyes look a certain way, run to the vet immediately. Well, and you should be able to tell if they're not looking at things as quickly and focusing. I mean, uh -huh. they watch everything we do. If your cat's not staring at you, something's wrong. <laughs> they watch everything. Sorry, my blind cat was, um, she was congenitally blind. So her eyes worked completely normally. And when she was rescued, it took them a while to discover that she was blind because she didn't look it, you know, she didn't have the dilated pupils and it was tough, but they did figure it out and it was, but it was congenital. So it wasn't an accident or anything. Now, I know as pets get older, they sometimes lose their vision. Is there anything we can do to help prevent that from happening? I think just, just stay vigilant, get the blood pressure checked. You know, some illnesses will contribute to it, but it's an, if, if there's an illness involved, you should already be on top of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So really what it boils down to is, is keep steady with your cat's history. Know when you get it, what are its, does it already have high blood pressure? Is it prone to this or that? Be aware. You know, I can't imagine a physical issue sets in and my family says, oh, this is a lot to deal with. We're putting you out, babe. I know. I can't. I said that. No, that's I'm I've been stuck for the last 10 minutes at least with who tosses out their blind cat. I, I know, mean, I know that level of cruelty to me is like I, I can't even get it. I don't get it. Cats as it is, you know, people just seem to think, oh, I'll just throw them outside, they'll figure it out. If they've been yeah. born inside, it's going to be a little tougher figuring it out. Well, your kismet came from outside, Linda. Yes, and was obviously not always outside, was a big lover. Beat to snot, fleas, mites, boo-boos, bruises. He's okay now, other than being FIV positive, which again, was this big, scary thing that now is, I don't want to say it's nothing, but... I have some some autoimmune issues and I'm autoimmune compromised. Nobody looks at me and classifies me as, you know, stage four cancer. It's just oh, a no, Linda, thing that goes you've on had, You've had that pneumonia for the past like five, six days. I think we should put you out. <laughs> Probably. 
probably. <laughs> and they've had to bring me things while I was sick in bed. And I'm sure it's probably time for me to go out. Well, you know, that's another big misconception. People think, oh, I'll just put my cat out. They'll, they'll right. know how to hunt and stuff. No. If you've had your cat since a kitten and it's been an indoor pet, it's not going to figure it out. It's going to be dinner for somebody else. So that's that's the cruelest thing you can do. Even worse when they do it to declawed. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I've we've seen that. that. Yes. Yes. We brought in this three-legged declawed 12-year-old cat that somebody tossed out. And we're like, what? Rita yeah. is having some construction done near her home, much to her chagrin. And they're putting in new housing. So the ground has been disrupted. And she's all of a sudden, she started having mice in her house. And I said, you can thank your neighbors. That's what just happened. So it's under control now. But she has found in a two months time, three dead mice without a single puncture on them. They were moving. So they were great fun. Remember, she had 15 cats in her house at this time. They were moving, so they were great fun to play with, but they didn't know they were supposed to eat them. They lost the right. disconnect. They Who didn't bite them or anything. I think they just had a heart attack. I found two and got them outside that were still alive, but the other three, sorry. Yeah, mine are that my cats do the same thing. They, they torture like them until them. they have a heart attack. And, and then they, they go, go, yay, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, and then they go, mom, I think the batteries are broke on this one. It's not <laughs> moving anymore. And they'll throw it in the air. <laughs> and then they just walk away and leave it for you because it's not moving anymore. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, here, now you can play with it. <laughs> I know you said you do um, some work. There was a TNR group near you, uh, Trap New to Release, for those of you who don't know. And I had asked you, had you ever found or had they ever found blind cats outside? And you said they have. Yeah, we have a spay-neuter program in a different part of North Carolina from where we're located. And it's uh, several counties together that don't have a lot of spay-neuter services available. So our program works with the TNR groups there um, to identify a colony. And then our strategy is to treat the entire colony all at once. It's not slipshod. It's just one at a time. And the people that are the colony caretakers, they know who's there and who's not. And every once in a while, a new cat will come in who clearly to everybody is not feral. And one of them that, that ended up with us has got a... Um, a damaged eye that was she would never have made it at all exactly yeah but they they turn up with one one cat that came in had a mason jar oh my gosh Stop thing around his neck. he was trying to find something to eat and got like stuck. a lid yeah and they come in with broken limbs one of them had a horrendous facial injury that hurt his oh eye gosh. um and, and our vet treats all those things if their teeth are hanging out she does dentals if their eyes are messed up she removes them she does everything she's an angel to me i'll tell you our county which i don't often brag about my small town that i live in, in but Ohio. they did something really cool last spring that i'm like shouting out and it did not take all that much preparation. I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. The Humane Society went to the city council and said, kind of sick of the ferals around here. We've got have a heart traps. All we need you to do is make it an official thing and put it out in the paper. They call the Humane Society and say, yes, I have a group of ferals living behind me on Jefferson Avenue. They come drop the traps. You call them when there's something in it. They take the trap away. Wow. They, you didn't even have to really do anything, right? So what did they, they do with those cats? They TNR them. And send them they back let them to the back same out? area. Okay. Yeah, to the same that's area. Awesome. Yeah, and I was like, because and if they I trap have, one that's not feral, that's gotten caught up in a feral I'm trap. I'm assuming then the Humane Society keeps them. I don't know. That's what we do. We work with local groups to find homes for ones that are clearly not. It feral. was her brainchild, the lady at the Humane Society. And I am like, that was the least amount of work because I have tried in my brain to figure out how to make something happen here in Defiance County. And I'm like, that was nothing. The Humane Society already has the traps. They went to a meeting, they talked, they printed something it's in the paper, they did it. Too bad that wow. wasn't in place when you trapped that Tasmanian yeah. devil. Wow, I know, kidding. I know. I still feel guilty about letting him out. I know yeah. we got to take a We've got to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more. We've got more questions for Catherine Hilton, Blind Cat Rescue and Sanctuary here in the wonderful Carolinas. We'll be right back. Kitty Poo Club reinvented the litter box. No more scrubbing that stinky plastic tray. Or worrying, oh my God, do my guests smell that? Kitty Poo Club has solved the stink. And now the worst part of cat ownership is hassle-free. No cleaning, no scrubbing, no more stink. And the best thing is you don't have to buy some oversized contraption that will break down. Kitty Poo Club litter boxes are manufactured to make your life easier. You have one cat? Easy peasy. 
A small mountain lion? No problem. You are going to love it. Your cats are going to love it. Believe me, there are good reasons why we sold over 3 million boxes. Go to kittypooclub.com, read the amazing reviews, and when you order, save 30% on your first auto ship. Visit kittypooclub.com, use code MEOW30 at checkout, and join the club, the Kitty Poo Club. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> And we're back with 19 Cats and Counting with my co-host, Linda Hall, and the awesome Catherine Hilton. Oh, I'm so in love with Blind Cat Rescue and Sanctuary. I can't wait. Linda, you need to get down here so we can go and pay a visit to these wonderful kitties. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're coming. Yes. We're coming. Definitely. We're coming. We're coming. Do a little video and show everybody. Last question. What's the biggest challenge for somebody who has a blind cat at home? I can speak to that as a person who had a blind cat for 12 years. The main thing is to throw away your misconceptions. Don't go, oh, he can't go downstairs. That's not going to work because they can. Basically, you just have to be patient and, and let your cat figure out the space that they live in. They remember. They know where the furniture is. They know where the stairs are. And that's really it. Once they know the lay of the land, they can smell the food. They'll fall into a pattern just like other cats do. They want to be fed when they, you know, at their time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you don't let them outside. We never let her out. Um, some people do, I think, on leashes. And that that's really an, a, a different decision. Um, but there's really nothing different about having a blind cat than it is to have a regular, a seeing cat. Just don't move your furniture around. It just over. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was thinking that I'm not one of those people who likes to move the furniture every weekend. Well, let's say like at Christmas time, you bring in a tree. This is us. Bring in a tree. So you got to move some things around. You bring her down and let her smell where the tree is and just walk slowly around the room. And then she figures it out. You're nice. good. You know, I did a blog post before Christmas about that, not towards blind cats, but all cats. You're bringing stuff in from the attic and up in the basement. You're moving all over and the stuff smells and you're pulling it in and you're taking it away. And oh my gosh, move slower, right? So, right. And what you said about the memory. So when my daughter was 19, she says, mom, I need my own apartment. And she found something. It wasn't be ready for two weeks, but she said, I have to have a cat. Understandable. So, you know, what do you need? You need a bed and a cat. So we went to the Humane Society. We adopted a cat, Tiger. He's still kicking. He's old oh. and cranky and is really a cranky. He is cranky. Thing, but, um, <laughs> so at 32, when her husband passed away and she had to come back home, they now had four cats. Tiger was one, of course. Wow. Three cats did exactly what I expected the three cats, what I expected the four cats to do. They came in low, slung to the ground. They sniffed. They investigated. Tiger had lived in this house for 10 days. I actually pulled her paperwork on her rental because it was driving me and I had to know. <laughs> 10 days. And then he'd been out of the house for 13 years. He walked in like he owned the joint and went straight up to her childhood bedroom. I get chills. I got good people. <laughs> Every time I say it, I get chills. How in the world? I mean, I know intellectually the answers. I know. Yeah. But come to on. To see it. Yeah. 13 yeah. years later, he walked in and went, Grandma, good to see you. I'm home. You know, I went, yeah, they remember. Ah. They remember. And they they will, you know, I think the stairs are things that really people worry about. And if you're if you've got a new cat, follow it around. You know, obviously don't let it just fall down the stairs. You be with it while it learns how to do it. And then it will always remember that. Well, it's, any cat's gonna be scared about it. Well, it's funny spaces. how how they learn because I brought in this this new foundling. He, she's about, you know, eight to ten weeks. She's small. So I brought her upstairs first. I went downstairs to get some food. She came down the stairs on her own. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's this tiny little thing. No problem. She with figured it out. Yep. She figured it out. She found it. Yep. And they'll figure they'll know what their limits are. If they get to something they can't get over, under, or beside, they'll stop. Exactly. You know? Yes. We joke. I tease Rita, although now that she adopted a kitten, her her average is off. But <laughs> up until up until the kitten, she had 13 out of 15 of her cats were seniors. Yeah. 12. Oh, 12 of the 15. Sorry. And I tease her that she's running a cat nursing home. And <laughs> most of them will not even come up to see her when she's upstairs in the office working. Now I have four like, young That's ones. a lot of stairs, right? Like, yeah, I'm old. I'm staying in this bed. She <laughs> put relax my cat on for me. I'm just going to chill here it's until she's true. done. 
she'll come back for me eventually. So, you know, cats change what they like and what they don't like anyway. And I, I know my first hyper dysplasia, uh, cerebellar hyperdysplasia, cat, everybody had the exact, exact reaction everybody else has. What's wrong? They're like little drunk cats, which is fun. But you have to realize there's nothing wrong, right? That's who they are. They don't That's know they that live. they're dis- disadvantaged or they're challenged. They, they don't have know. two like that at the rescue that are normal absolutely. for them. Are they blind as well? Or they just have the... One of them is blind and deaf. Wow. I've dealt with yes. a deaf cat before. I, I owned a cat sitting business for years. And the main challenge with that cat was you know, not sneaking up and scaring the heck out of the cat. Right. Well, you know, that's true of blind cats too. And I learned this the hard way, you know, you kind of forget that they don't see you. So I learned that before I went in to pet my cat, because it would startle her because she couldn't see my hand coming. I would make a noise with my hand so she could hear it coming because my voice is back here, but my hand's up here. That's a very good idea. Or, and you know, you that could always worked. She never, never got scared after that. We yeah. worked with a couple that wanted to train their cat to come. They were moving and they used to oh, take yeah, their yeah. cats on walks and they were petrified that with the new area, they were going to lose their cat. And they were Aww. determined on these walks. Well, they were both deaf. And I believe she had some hearing at some point because she had a little bit of verbal, but he had. But she was verbal. pretty verbal. He was. So, wasn't. yeah. Yeah. She said I, they were waiting for an interpreter. And I'm like, I can understand you. Him. He had nothing. But so to teach the cat to come, we taught him it's two claps. You know, the cat. Just because they can't speak doesn't mean that's the only thing the cat well, That wouldn't hear, work right? with a deaf cat, though. No, it would not. <laughs> but if you hit the floor twice, they can feel yeah, that vibration. I think if you tap on something, the deaf Every cat time before you that's walk what in I the would room, do. you would tap, tap. That's what I would do with the deaf cat that I was sitting. I would, I would do something to make a vibration so she would feel exactly. that. Yes. Because that's what I'm trying to think. We use word association for so much that I'm like, Catherine, we just need an hour with you just to recall yeah, I know, everything. Yeah, right? I we do. That. We got this, like, you know, I started teaching the class, you know, as we age, we don't sleep through the night anymore. There are potty breaks because your body, you know, hates you. <laughs> and um, so the cats are following me to the bathroom, which is lovely, but there's a lot of them. And four of them are black, which I tell people in the is middle like of the land night. mines at night, right? Yeah, they're trying to kill me. With now that. I have two to deal with that are black. <laughs> so before I get up, I say, I got a potty and I go straight to the bathroom back and I don't interact. They picked that up in three repetitions. Oh, when she says that, I ain't getting nothing. And she's coming right back. So I might as well not give up you, my warm You can't spot. do that Boom. with a deaf cat. So, yeah. So I'm looking at all of the things, you know, we had a cat that was, I believe it was an old age cognitive decline and the hearing was declining. And the cat would get up in the night and be very confused, very Alzheimer's-ish, right? But we use music a lot and things. To, and I'm like, oh, wait, this cat's deaf. This cat can't use me. You know, it, working around all of these yeah instances to but wait that doesn't work for this cat so the blind cat music would be calming do you use to... hand signals or things for a deaf cat how do you teach it things like that yeah i'm like there's just... i think it's probably maybe food treat driven because they can smell this is true and they can sense the vibrations so i think those two things and and they can still use their whiskers yes sure. so i think just really focusing on those other senses would be critical and help i would think with a blind cat especially you'd have to be very careful with whisker sensitivity and whisker fatigue whisker and making fatigue. sure that they've whisker got the fatigue. shallow bowls and oh, the, yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah but they 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 use them so well and so discreetly like you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't know any difference it just looks like a regular thing. i love it but isn't that the way it is with everybody i mean would we seriously would we be having this conversation if our podcast was about everyday lives and i was on here talking to you about your sister who lost her leg and like but can she work does anybody <laughs> really want her to live with them i mean she's only got two legs right well like, there's a difference though you. linda you know animals are like perpetual children so there's a That's difference true. there between talking about an adult with uh, a disability or, or uh, whatever. What is the proper term these days? I don't know. Yes, yeah, so some sort of disability or, or change in the differently ability, but, able. But don't uh, we get that? And a cat. Get... I have a friend who I'd really love to come visit BCR, but she's always like, "Oh, I couldn't. I'd be so upset and so depressed." And I'd be like, "No, you wouldn't, because these poor cats can't see." And I'm like, "You, you have no idea." I said, "You need to watch the videos we have on Facebook. Look at our live tours." Then get in touch with me and we will go down there together and you won't be proud. <laughs> and the gift you're giving to those cats, because we have an amazing rescue here that I adore. And I know I said to her, in Defiance, FFRC, Ohio. Yes. when I adopted my first Subra out of there, I said, I feel like I should be at the Humane Society because this cat was not in danger of being euthanized. And she said, Linda, 
first of all, this is not a home. Yes, she's happy here. She could be happy here forever, but this is not a home. We want her in a home. Second of all, do you know how many cats I turn away every day because I'm at capacity? You get her out of here. I can take in another cat that is going to get euthanized. So that changed me a lot. And then, you know, you can volunteer. You can come sit with them, spend time with them. Not sure a cat's good for your child. Take your child in. Get to yeah. meet the cat. How is the child Exposure doing? Can the child the follow the rules? Way. Yeah, 100%. I actually think yes. a tour of the blind cat rescue would be awesome for kids because yes, then they learn. You know, there's yeah. there's pets out there that have challenges it's nothing to be afraid of especially yes, if you see different. them being happy they don't know they don't know they can't exactly. see they don't know they're different exactly 100 percent. yeah kismet doesn't know that he's got fiv or you know i don't think smoochie realizes her leg is gone it's just yeah. no. it's just their life my, right? my yeah. mom has a one-eyed dog she doesn't know she only has one eye yeah <laughs> right i think yep. that we need to go there linda and do a podcast you from are the blind right that would be head. Head. Yes. or a live a facebook live 100 100 right? so cool. i agree 100 percent. i'm yes. on board that is on the list <laughs> yes because that's it. People are so afraid. I, I had a cat once, stray, going to take it to the shelter. Of course, didn't. Fine. Bring the cat in. Let's get was the cat boo -boo? fixed. Yeah. We found out when he went in for his neuter that he was FIV positive. And this was way back in the dark ages. Uh -huh. Okay. And they were like, no, we're euthanizing this cat. The cat was dead oh, I before that. I ever got there. It bothers me to this day. And it was... That's what they did back then. They know better. My now. daughter will be 35. So I think it's been about 33 years that since this happened. I understand. And now I'm living with an FIV cat. And every once in a while, I think, you know, Boo Boo could have lived to be. I I've had Kismet for well over five years now, and he's fine, other than having to have some teeth removed. The thing about those cats is, you know, it's mostly boys. And once they are fixed and they don't fight anymore, they don't do the deep bites that transmit FIV. So that's what I said, you know. There was a vaccination for it, and then they found out it was giving onsite cancer. Mm -hmm. So they, so they don't give discontinued it because they offered that to me when I was talking because I did my information first. First thing, whether your cat is blind, deaf, FIV, whatever your cat is, talk to your vet. Say, what am I getting myself into, right? How hard is this? Are my other cats in danger? And they said, and this cat is not a fighter, and they said if this cat was a fighter and really... First of all, the viral load's got to be enough. It's just like, uh, you know, HIV. And they say, oh, but my viral load is nearly indetectable. So you basically don't have it at that point. So you've got to have a high enough viral load. It's got to be enough in the spit. It's got to be a deep enough puncture wound that it gets there. I mean, the stars have to align. Is it impossible? No. Is it something you should take seriously? Yes. But kids, it's not a fighter and it's never been anyone in his life. So didn't you say, I, Catherine, gonna... that, that you guys actually have some FIV and, and you have some feline leukemia cats too, you, you said. Do. Now, the feline leukemia cats, you have to keep separate. Is that true? Yeah, mm -hmm. we keep the leukemia cats are all in rooms together. And then the FIVs are in rooms together. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Careful about that. But you yeah, could mix the good. FIV cats with the non FIV cats, just not, not with the could, leukemia. They're cats. all fixed. So. Provi yeah, exactly. Provided there's no fight. Like I said, I've had kids with here for five years and nothing has happened. But if you've got the space and they're not alone, it only bothers me when this cat is in a room all by itself because it has FIV. And then you're like, no, baby, that's not fair. That's not the right way to live. We have uh, dorm rooms or suites for our guys. They're all of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. I can't wait to see. If you ever want to see them, we have 24-hour cameras. <gasps> so you can tune in any time of day, day or night. You know what I'll be doing when we're done with sessions. Too. I love this. <laughs> Just go to our website and there's a link called uh, Watch Us Live or something like that. Click on that. It'll take you Let me right see. I've it. got your website. I up love right here. it. Yes. I love it. And everybody, so, of course, th they rely on donations. So absolutely. please yeah. donate blindcatrescue.com. Watch the live. Learn about the blind cats and donate a few dollars. I mean... Everybody's like, oh, I don't have much. I can't donate a lot. So what? Every $5, donation, $10. A dollar. If yes. a thousand people donate $10, guess what? Every That's donation, a lot of money. $10,000. Exactly. One dollar. Yes. Do you have like wish lists like on Amazon and that sort of thing? We do. We have four wish lists. We have Amazon, Chewy. We have um, Target now and Walmart. And they're we all actually very Amazon. good. Very, yes, yeah. we do. Because that can account. help. You know, if you're going there to do your shopping anyway, pick something else up, exactly. you know. So, yes. Exactly. And we do have, we have several programs that people, for them to support the cats. If you, we can, they can virtually adopt a cat by becoming a sponsor. I love and people it. will go to the website and find one that they love. And there's a little sponsor me button. And all I have to do is click it. And then I love those. We need to do that too. We, we need to do our website. But get down here because we need to get up there. <laughs> We have to wrap. 
unfortunately. Is there anything we haven't covered, Catherine, anything else that you think it's important for people to know about blind cats in general and about your sanctuary specifically? I would just invite people to come visit us. We are located in St. Paul's, North Carolina, which is right off of I-95, which runs up and down the East Coast. We are open Monday through Saturday from 1230 to 4. Everybody is welcome to come in. The staff will be there. We also have monthly open houses and our schedule is on our website. And those are afternoons where you can come in and and meet other folks who sponsor cats and who some visit all the time and some are brand new. Any of those chances is a great time to just sit in a room with a blind cat and learn that they're just cats. I love this so much. I do yes. too. I, I'm in love with you guys. Come on down. I would love for you guys We're to. going to. We definitely. definitely will. We'll make that a priority this year. Fantastic. Thank you for having us on this today. If there's any way, if you're in the area and can visit, please visit. Like we said, send a dollar. You're making an order from Amazon. We're all making orders from Amazon. Throw in a little something for the cats. Anything you can do. It just means so much. And it sometimes does. it's fun to pick out the food or the litter or whatever you're I sending know. and know what you're getting, right? And we update our lists uh, frequently. So the things that we need most are always at the top. Wonderful. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Thank you you so much for coming on the show. Of course, Linda. This has been a great pleasure. It's been very educational. And I've learned a lot about blind cats. Uh, But of course, as we know, a cat is a cat is a cat. It doesn't matter if they can see or not. They can still love you. You can still love them. They're happy little guys. Right. And, yes. too. and Linda, thank you again for being my co-host. I'm always feeling better because I haven't spoken there. to you in like six days and it's killing me. I know. <laughs> I know. Me too. Imagine. <laughs> and of course, I have to thank Mark Winter as always for giving us this spot on Pet Life Radio. We are forever grateful. I hope our yes. mics sound okay. <laughs> and everybody, don't forget, every day is Catter Day. We'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.